Well, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank in March triggered turmoil in the banking sector, leading venture capital firms like Graycroft with several clients who banked with SVB. Well, they had to pick up the pieces. Yahoo Finance's Ali Garfinkel sat down with Graycroft co-founder Dana Settle at this year's Milken Conference to discuss the timeline of events and how her company has been dealing with the aftermath. We really saw it all unfolding kind of in real time. And we had, you know, an, an, a huge number of companies that banked with SVB. So, you know, what we were trying to do was really just triage. And so all of our partners, I mean, each person, you know, sort of took their portfolio companies, went into action and figured out what needed to be done. And so that was really how we spent that, you know, sort of 72 hours. <laughs> and how did you manage it, that kind of triage? Because I imagine different por portfolio companies had different needs. Yes. So, you know, companies that actually we knew um, were under the insured limit were fine. I mean, we sort of put those into one bucket. And then anybody who was over uh, and, 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 sorry, in that bucket, and then also that could make payroll with that the next week were fine. Anybody who was over that and or payroll was over that, those are the ones that we really took action with and helped them sort of sort through that, find uh, ways to open accounts at different banks and, and, um, and you know, look for solutions wherever needed, so. Out of curiosity, do you remember the first call you made? Uh, do I remember the first call that I made? Um, actually, it was to my, to, to, to my co-founder partner. Really? So he and I, yeah, because it was sort of, okay, we needed to disseminate information from our firm out to our founders. And so that was, it was, okay, what are we gonna get out and how are we gonna do it? And what was kind of that first message? The first message was, tell us what, where you stand, right? Do you have sufficient capital to make payroll? Um, are you under the FDIC limits? Are your accounts in sweep accounts? I mean, pretty granular. Yeah, pretty so, granular yeah. stuff and a request for information rather than Correct. just a message yes. out saying we're here for you. Right, oh yeah, no, definitely. I think in those times you have to be very proactive and, and engage in real time, not sort of a broadcast message. I mean, really, I mean, people needed to hear from us one-on-one. -on -one. And so that was the triage part of it. And then how did it all shake out? as to bring us to the Monday, right? <laughs> you lived an entire life before that, but as Monday shook out, how were you feeling? What were you seeing? Um, so as Monday, I mean, we were obviously uh, a big sigh of relief when the government stepped in. And, um, but I think, you know, the triage continued, right? Because I think it was a real wake up call to make sure that companies were stable and had redundancy built in. And so, you know, that really, you know, we spent, I mean, it was, again, it was a good wake up call. And, uh, and that was how we spent a lot of time over the, you know, the following 30 days. Now I want to transition because you also, in the middle of all of this, raised a billion dollars almost between two rounds. How did you do it? Well, it wasn't just that, you know, that two weeks. It took yeah, a it wasn't in that two week period. <laughs> it was before that, luckily. Yes, yes. Um, but no, we were closing uh, on a brand new set of funds and, uh, and, and thrilled to have closed when we did. Uh, it's just, you know, timing really has worked out terrifically. Um, and having, uh, you know, a significant pool of capital in the market today is, is incredible because the market has contracted so much and both equity capital and also debt. Well, and tell me a little bit more about, you know, where, you know, as you're raising this fund, there's a lot of data that shows, for instance, that LPs, for example, aren't investing as much. The pipe exits are down, right? The pipeline is kind of clogged up almost. It's sort of come to a standstill. How is raising this fund different than raising others? So we're very fortunate that we have a terrific set of LPs that have supported us for, you know, really, you know, all of our funds. And, and, um, and so we have great support from our existing investors and we developed and, we, you know, we're always developing new relationships with LPs. And so, you know, look, we have a, a, tr a great track record over a long period of time. And so we did bring in a number of new investors as well. And, you know, again, it's just nurturing and, and spending time with folks and being very transparent and, and developing those relationships. So it's not, a, it's not a sales call, just are you interested in investing? It really is, you know, relationships that we've developed over a long period of time. And would you say the state of the private markets is better or worse than you expected heading into this year? Oh, it's certainly worse. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I love the candor. You're just like, yeah, no, yeah. it's worse. Yeah, it's worse. Yeah. I mean, look, we raised our first institutional fund in uh, 2009. So um, I'm, I'm kind of comfortable uh, with discomfort. And uh, this, this, this time, you know, is certainly, uh, I think, uh, even more dramatic than 2009 in some ways specifically related to 
LPs in the venture community. And we're already running out of time, but I wanted to ask you about AI before we go. How are you thinking about investing in AI, and are there any areas AI won't touch? Uh, yes, excellent question. Um, so we are big believers in AI. I mean, I think it's an inevitability. Um, and so we're looking at both companies that are sort of native AI companies as well as companies that have embraced AI and are really rolling it out as a core part of their product. Um, and so, you know, look, we, we think it's an inevitability. It is a core focus of our core funds. Um, in addition, there are areas that won't be touched by AI, um, at least not in their core, and that's consumer products. And, you know, so long as, as uh, humans continue to consume things, which we will, uh, there will be demand for consumer products. And so we really believe there's opportunity there as well. And, and those companies, the, uh, their, their processes around marketing and distribution and production will be improved with AI, but the products will still be sold. That was Greycroft co-founder Dana Settle at this year's Milken Conference speaking to our Ali Garfinkel.